All right, and welcome back from that break. Hopefully you had a restful one and a recharging one. And uh, I want to bring us back to attendance. So those of you that haven't heard me in the first couple of times, make sure you put your name in the chat. Name in the chat again. We're doing the next check-in for Ben's presentation. Um, he is going to talk about media strategy, today's best tools. And I just want to do a little bit of a bio for him. He's the vice president and communications director for the UA Fayetteville Education Association Local 965. He's overseen the website, social media, mailing lists, media relations, and newsletters since 2018. He's an ESP member of AEA NEA. He's the website manager at the University of Arkansas since 2016. Managed comms for the National Society of Newspaper Columnists for many years until 2016. And he is a career journalist for decades. And quite frankly, I appreciate his work with AEA. He serves on the legislative committee and we appreciate his work there as well. And so I'm gonna hand it over to you, Mr. Ben. Appreciate you coming and helping us all to learn more about media strategies. That sounds like my cue. Uh, and people don't need to um, all of a sudden turn on their uh, mics. April, you can tell me or gesture if I'm being heard okay. I've already tested the slides such as they are. We can hear you just fine, sir. Okay, let's roll. I um, want to thank everybody who um, is listening today. My gosh, 75. Uh, I've given this talk before and was for a rousing crowd of 20. Um, it's the same talk. I hope I'm doing it with similar plum. And I'm very grateful for April and Liz to invite me and uh, Mike as well. Um, we must have done something right when we were doing the presentations before. Mike's was tremendous. Um, there's a little interconnectivity with Mike I'll be mentioning later. But the difference from the 70s uh, to the 2020s in communications, media strategy, the principles are about the same. Gosh knows how we get there is different. So I'm going to shift right into my slides. And um, I'm not following. The, there we go. And we can see your slides, sir. Very good. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I'm hitting I'm hitting play on that. Well, you guys get to see my my the course the course order as opposed to seeing the full screen, but that's okay. It's a note for myself. Here's the title, but we already knew that. Um, what I want to note here is that this is basically. Uh, a teacher person to fish sort of lecture. There's narrative because I've got one big example or in a way a case study that I'll be referencing, but Mike's historical saga, you won't hear here except to get the word out. The teach the person to fish is sort of my analogy to say, I can tell you a story about the old man and the youngster, um, or I can just tell you how to tie the hook. And we're gonna do more tie the hook uh, because I am planning to have time. Let me get my timer here. I do want to have time for a lot of questions. We have a lot of avenues in media strategy in sharing our, our word and sharing what our messages. And uh, whatever hits you all today might not be what I'm expecting. So we'll leave that for the questions in the chat uh, towards the end. Um, and I'm planning to have 10, 15 minutes for that unless I get rolling and then Maybe that's because I'm getting questions in the meantime. Um, the first point, I sort of I'm I'm starting in the middle in a way. But what we're doing as communicators, and if we're leading an organization, or if we're in the classroom, and I know basically all of us are either in the classroom or support staff. I'm support staff, for example, is communicating. And and that's my prism. Uh, Mike has one. He's a former vice president of the union. He came at it from, from and everything, which is why he's been so great here with uh, Local 965 UA Fayetteville, is that he has the historic perspective, and uh, we're not just shooting stuff in the dark. 
However, in my job on campus as a webmaster, um, after 30, 40 years as a, as a newspaper and radio guy, mainly newspaper, is the questions I have when people ask, I want a website, I want to enhance my Facebook presence. This is faculty or academic departments. And they can't answer these questions. What do you want to say? Who do you want to say it to? What do you want them to do with what you say? Um, most of them just want a presence. And um, which is why, actually, by default, after doing this for almost eight years in three weeks, um, we exist. We are a, a labor organization. We're, an ed, we're a group of educators trying to have stability and improve ourselves and do what's best for our students. Whatever. How you, we exist is a good point. And um, you can build on that. Back a step. What you want to say, you focus that. Who do you want to say it to? Who's your primary audience? When there's a primary audience, of course, there's a secondary. Uh, are you talking to your membership? Yeah. Are you trying to get new members? Oh, yeah. Primary, secondary, is it all the same? But knowing where you're going with your message, and if you're not like me spending basically in adulthood writing and so forth, it may be a little bit awkward for you. Um, and what do you want them to do with your message? Um, you come down to this, it's like, okay, we acknowledge you exist. No, there's more to it than that because you're really saying, hold on, in a couple of weeks, we're going to have something you're going to be interested in. Well, I want to go into some about the university. Like I was about to say in, the, in here, is this, I'm, I'm talking about this from an AEA chapter point of view, um, that we're all here as members, of course. But... When I'm talking about media strategy, communication strategies, you're planning a science fair in the classroom or with several classrooms, you're planning a bake sale, and this could be beyond the classroom. It could be your 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 worship congregation and um, you've been selected to run Facebook for them. Who knows? All of these techniques are pretty universal. Um, there's very little data. I'd like to say this proves this, but when we come to data and communication strategies, it's really depressing. Um, just because the it doesn't sound good. When I say we went viral, when UA Fayetteville Education Association went viral, we got a hundred hits on our link. Well, that's not two million for for Swifties for for Taylor. There, it's fifty, a hundred. Is it good for us? Oh yeah, it's better than three. But relative to the group, it's subjective. Um, I want to note about the history of my union because it all has to do with getting the word out and our success, relative success. We began 62 years ago. We were certified. We we're part of the American Federation of State County Municipal Employees until the year 2000 when we joined NEA, AEA. For the first three decades or so, according to a former leader, of of us, we were a couple of hundred members. That's that's strong, especially for an education group. And uh, when we look at 2024, the UA has 51,000 faculty and staff. About, sorry about the thousand. That doesn't even fill our arena. 5,100. Um, we serve 32,000 students, including graduate students. That's last year's numbers. So much for data. Our union membership, I'll just sit here, we're all friends. We're however about 50. Uh, since I began in, in 2017 into 2018, it's been about 50. A little under, a little over. Uh, that's 1%. Depressing, yeah. Uh, when we have our events on campus and people come up to us, people we know and say, I didn't know that the university had a union. That happens so much. Well, I'm, I'm paddling as fast as I can. The board is, or the members are really active in committees. We're all paddling as fast as we can to get the word out. But these techniques work um, given time and given the attention to it. Um, we are handicapped a bit as we're public employees of the state of Arkansas. We're in public education. There's some more strictures on what we can do as an organization of employees in higher ed. Um, the state constitution allows us to unionize. There is no collective bargaining. We can't meet on campus during work hours. 
of course, with custodians and so forth, our work hours are uh, 6 a.m. to 6 a.m. And we can't recruit on campus. Uh, so we can tell, we're, we're free to tell people what we do, but we can't hand out application forms. We can't direct people to the join page of the website and so forth. Um, but that's a very shadowy line. When we tell people what we do and what we are and hand them a brochure that leads us to a mailing list or a newsletter, um, somebody could probably say, uh-uh, lucky we haven't. And and because of that, because we're 1%, we may not know when we win. Um, and all I can say is, and, and the example I'm about to give you is, well, when when something we support is successful, it's a win. Uh, if we help, fine. If we're the majority factor, great. If it was by some unforeseen force, it's still, we're going to chalk it up. We got to. It, it's morale and it's right. Um, it may not have happened without our noise making. And media strategy is all about noise making. The way that we do this is we we lean away a bit as a labor organization. Uh, labor organizations represent members. That's when there's <clears throat> states that allow unions um, and so forth, then they have that. Um, we have our few members, but what we focus on is that we advocate for all employees. We represent members. They have um, Uniserve representation as they need it. Uh, we have events for them. But if you get draw a UA paycheck, we're there for you um, and we'll do our utmost. In other words, instead of collective bargaining, it's collective action. Um, my next slide is noisy. You shouldn't really have more than three or five, three or five points in the slide. This is the only way to to pile drive through this, and um, and the next one's a little shorter, and then it's smooth sailing. Um, and you don't need to take notes. Uh, Mike's not asking for you to take notes for a quiz, and I'm not either. Just what rings for you. Uh, there's several avenues of communication. Uh, first is what I'm calling analog or merely 20th century. Um, and it include and a lot of this can overlap with what Mike was talking about. Uh, word of mouth, just getting the word out informally, phoning and so forth, putting up posters, having handouts. We still do that. Actually, Mike is our chief poster maker um for for the campus how effective they are well you don't really get clicks when someone's walking by a poster and sees something's going to happen at two o'clock on a sunday um but it lets people know we're there um phone banks uh, mike mentioned byard rustin having come to arkansas uh in the early 70s he of course was a lieutenant of reverend martin luther king jr um there was just in the last year a movie biography of byard rustin called Rustin, R-U-S-T-I-N, like the city in Louisiana, on Netflix. And um, he used phone banks. And among the younger people here, what's a phone bank? Uh, if you were little and watched ATN during Pledge Week and saw a bunch of people on phones, on risers, that's a phone bank. Uh, the Rustin movie talks a lot about how he employed that. It's a lot like early internet, 10 people, phone and has 10 other people to phone out it's a way of it radio public service announcements have been here since radio happened which is a bit over a century ago website social calendars is the end of the 20th century um public radio stations uh, regular radio stations tv station websites have events calendars and you could put your event on there We'll come back to that a bit. It's it, it's an avenue. It's not a great avenue, but it's an avenue. Moving ahead quickly, <laughs> jumping up to um, 15, 20, 25 years ago, Facebook. There's Facebook post casually. There's actually post an event, uh, an event format. There's X, now t formerly Twitter. Um, the photo-based um, social media like Instagram and TikTok. Uh, the university, and I know a lot of school districts forbid TikTok. Young people do use it. It's an avenue. Um, texting. I'd call texting the latter day phone bank. You can uh, text your friends. I can text the board. I've got their cell phone numbers, and that works. There are texting apps. 
uh, where you can mass write people. Uh, this is like when you get a message from your doctor saying, we have you scheduled, please call to confirm or click yes. Um, that sort of thing. Terminix is on the way to your house. We can do that. And it's a paid service. You'd have to budget that over. Emails are comparable in that there's a manual way and an app way. I can write you one-on-one. -on -one. I can write three of you. I can write a hundred of you with a very, very long BCC or reply. Subject line, two line, copy, uh, close copy. Um, and it has things that we could talk about uh, emails are governed by federal law. Uh, that unsubscribe you see on commercial uh, websites, that's the law. That's to keep people from being spammed. Does it work? Um, it's hard for me to say unsubscribe. I get Democratic Party messages, and I'm getting them from all 50 states because I made one donation. I have to hit unsubscribe a 50 plus times, and they take a while to go. That leads to best practices, and we'll go into that shortly. Well, a, a group like ours or a classroom function, a church group, having your own website makes a lot of things easier. One option to that, websites can be free to um, to buy. You can't buy something free, but there's some free, free ways of building websites. If you have a professional web, a professional Facebook page, <clears throat> And that's the best you can do in your comfort on Facebook. Go with that. A Facebook page can do everything a website. A professional Facebook page can do everything a website can. The last one on the list, and it's both analog 20th century through now, is a news release. Um, it's always called a press release, although the days of the press are kind of over. It's an announcement of what you're going to do. I'm dividing previous slide, this multifaceted way of hitting stuff into how you tell your membership and how you tell the word, your, the world. Um, word of mouth, obviously, is, is a good one. Posters and handouts work, direct phoning and email. And I've already gone through these, so I'm just running through them to emphasize. Um, you can use an email marketing app, that's like MailChimp or Constant Contact. Or you can do it personally or manually. Texting, as I said before, I'm not comfortable with texting. I'm, um, anybody in AEA sends us texts. I think you've got some, you know, to tell, got emails about this event. Um, depending on how high up you are in AEA, you get them maybe from NEA. Um, people in my line of work professionally love texting because it works. People click back. As a consumer, I get annoyed. Uh, if we're in a small group and a volunteer group or a group that's paying dues, you don't necessarily want to upset people, aggravate people unnecessarily. Um, Mike and me, president, board members of our local, we text each other by group as a thread all the time. Um, you can do it. Commercial ones are available. I'm cautioning golden rule. Most everything we do is a lot of golden rule. Um, Slack, on the other hand, people volunteer to sign up. Uh, for Slack or similar communication groups that work like texting. Um, radio public service announcements is the next category. Um, in Northwest Arkansas, at least, we have a very active public radio station. If you can get your public service announcement up there, um, people hear it. They'll, they'll call you and say, I, I heard about your event. And no matter what time, if it's you know classical music in two in the morning, they hear it. It works. Um, does it work well? It's all relative. What's viral? Again, uh, the social calendars, um, all three of our Northwest Arkansas TV stations have them if you click on the website. One of them uh, really would rather sell you ad space. So every time you click getting to the calendar, checking the day, checking what kind of group you are, there's always popping up ads. If it eats your time, consider how many people actually go to uh, KRK or KFSM or something to look at the events. They're probably not. Um, the public radio station, if I've created a PSA, I can cut and paste the PSA into their social calendar and it's easy to do. So measure these things that you're, as you're 
groups communication comms person with the time outlay versus how successful it's likely to be. Um, Facebook, you keep alive to your own people with Facebook. I wouldn't worry too much about some social best practice rules that say you really ought to post every day or even twice a week. Um, if you're wasting people's time, so just posting, it's not silly stuff, it's important to you. But if it's news they can use, something out of NEA Today, the magazine, or something from a local newspaper that's of interest to the group. And yeah, even if it's if it's sly and fun, if you're posting once or twice or three times a month, that's plenty. And um, you're keeping in contact. They remember you exist. That's all good. When you have an event, create an event there. And it's very handy. Facebook makes it easy. Your own group's website is another avenue of telling your people. And I'm going to repeat all these basically for how you tell the world what you're up to. Facebook posts an event. A professional Facebook post, and you would double check your privacy limitations when you're setting it up or double check it as public as possible. Um, transparency saves the day. If something is iffy, don't put it in Facebook. I wouldn't put it in a group email. If you need to tell something just to your fellow board members, just tell them um, in whatever way you know is works best. But transparency will get you people. People who didn't know you existed, see one thing, it clicked to another thing, off on a tangent, all of a sudden it's like, what? You guys do this? Great. Um, X and Twitter. I didn't put this under Twitter. To your people, I don't have data on this, but when I post, I, anything I post on Facebook for the chapter, I also post to X. Never mind this week's uh, making likes anonymous, which uh, Elon Musk did yesterday. We get very few clicks on X. It's maybe not worth your time unless you've got something you want the world to know. If it's political and has a chance to get a lot of attention, Definitely use X. If you're trying to reach your own people, don't worry about it. Even if they're on X and look at it twice a day and get a lot of laughs out of it, they're not using it in the same way they're using Facebook. Group's website, we're going to be telling people on Facebook, on X, um, press releases, what have you, the name of your website, how to get there. To me, it's the hub. A lot of if and if you use a Facebook po page. For your group instead of website it's the same thing hub and spokes um your website is your hub around which are the spokes your other avenues of email texting uh word of mouth uh poster on the street um all of those pieces work really really well like that um the news release uh is what we're going to be heading to with my example you have an event it could be a small one like a, a group picnic like we had for Labor Day. It could be a big one like my big example of um, a rally to uh, stop outsourcing in its tracks on campus. You send a news release to reporters, news producers, news directors, editors, if you have their name and their current, because there's a lot of turnover in, the, in this world, write them directly. I can tell you that if you go to your local TV station's website, there's going to be a place that says news tips. They do get read. If it, and some stations don't say news tips. It may just say for general questions or suggestions right here. And it's a, a, a blank mailbox, just contact at nameofstation.com or whatever. They are read. You just have to give them enough time. Radio public service announcements are really for the world. Uh, it's a lesser way of doing it. Social calendars, it'll get some clicks if you've got the time. My, my big case study here is the University of Arkansas Fayetteville campus, main flagship campus. In January to February, we began, we board members of Local 965 began hearing whispers, rumors, some people talked to us directly from the custodial staff. Um, there's 200 plus custodians and groundskeepers. They're separate divisions. They're part of facilities management, as we call them. The university was had begun emailing them 
that we're looking at outsourcing your jobs. Don't worry, the pay is going to be the same and you're still going to get benefits. But it didn't strike them as right. They contacted various members of the union. And to keep in mind, and until this happened, and for the last, since 2018 or so, we, we've had basically no members from facilities management. Uh, we've been clerical staff as a webmaster, I guess I'm clerical, and faculty. We have a few graduate teaching and research assistants and so forth, but we really haven't had uh, our more service-oriented staff people, but we're there to help. We advocate for all employees. Um, so we all began talking on text threads, the officers, and our first strategy, and this is, again, applying what we're talking about, is speed. We don't know when the, this is a proposal to outsource, to privatize several hundred jobs. Um, we don't know when they're going to do it. Uh, they're very close mouth on the administration when something big like this is happening. Um, if we had an end, we probably wouldn't be in the union. Or if, if we were in the union and had an end, they would do it. They talk about this outside our purview. So we know we have to act fast. Third week of February, third week of any month is our regular meeting. We let the word out. Um, we meet in the club room of a local burger and beer place, burger and beer and wings place uh, that holds when we're there and, and we it's full, it holds 12 or 14 of us. When you count all the tables it's filled with and some of the leftover furniture that they've dumped in there. Nice place, great burgers, great fries and beer and so forth. We got 28. This was a standing room only event and it was custodians. Anybody who wanted to speak spoke. Um, Mike gave sort of a wrap up note to say, we can do this. We can do this by having a rally, by having a march. What we do as a union with very little collective power is we can shame them. Mike, I've always loved that word uh, in this context, in other contexts too, but we let them know that we're watching. February and March is when we officers and uh, several custodians, although not members, and this included management of custodians. Uh, their supervisors don't want to lose their jobs. They don't want to lose their good people, many of whom have been there for years and years, are with us as we figure this out. The first thing we did was, okay, we need to figure out when, and we need to figure out where. The where is we're going to march. Duh, it's through campus. Um, but where are we going to meet and coalesce and when? We're not trusting that they'll start at the beginning of the fiscal year, which is in two weeks or so, July 1st. We, you know, If we could guess, we're going to say the end of the first quarter, which is a couple of weeks away. So we need to act within three weeks. So then we try to pick out a day. We don't want to cross uh, big sports activities, other events. We had a big block, though, and it was spring break. That's March. And uh, we decided, well, it does not directly affect students. So we set it the Saturday that was the first Saturday of week-long spring break. The campus is closed. It was our best option. you got to go with the best option if you want to do something sometimes. Um, we talked with um, religious groups that have meetings near campus. The, the Lutherans, the Lutheran Church and the Episcopal Church have buildings that are across the street from campus. Uh, the Unitarian Universalist Church, uh, its own main building is three blocks away. So where can we start and have speeches? We can set aside a place with paint and magic markers to paint pickets. Uh, we end up with the Episcopalian group, which is right across the street. And that gives us something to promote, a day and a time. We're going to have the rally first, then the march. As we do this, and this is more about organizing first and media strategies second, is that we're relatively new at this. And we're always, you know, we're going to be forgetting something. Are we prepared enough by thinking about the what ifs? You know, what's possible that'll mess up? Uh, rain. You know, it's going to rain. What do we do? And the extreme. Um, someone's not happy we're there. I, it could be anything. And all we could do really is brainstorm. Uh, the least thing actually ended up being we did this, we arranged a few speakers, we corralled a few people. When they actually came, would you mind speaking? We know you represent the group. 
we got our list of speakers. Uh, Mike and me looked at each other. Who's going to MC? Mike was a, a speaker, so I became MC. It was not something we planned. We rode with it. It worked. I'm going to show you some examples of what we did as terms of communications. The first piece is we have we use a email marketing service, MailChimp. It's not that I'm in love with MailChimp, but it's actually free. If you have five, if your email is number five hundred or fewer, it's free. One plus is is that they don't hound you all the time to say please subscribe if you, you're going to get so much more with a premium subscription they're pretty cool about that is it easy to use i do a lot of websites so i don't think it's a trouble i do know because i've used the other major marketing called constant contact they're all a pill we send out an email uh every month to everybody and we let people know we may email them in between our monthly newsletter i have art um, our president, Herschel Hartford, has a message. We give our meeting. We give a big shout out to the restaurant, uh, including a click to their menu. Recent events um, at the bottom, you know, of course, we mentioned our name, the board member's name, and so forth. It's good if you can do it. You can make a, a grand post of events on the Facebook page instead. This is the internal media that we're working on. Here's an event for Facebook. This was for the March, on March 16th. Um, we had a poster as art. When I look at it, after it happened, the heading is light gray. I'm sorry, that's going to be hard to read, but you all have seen Facebook events, or most of you have who are on Facebook. And um, 27 people responded. We had a lot more than that, and I'm going to come back to it. I do want to note the press release we sent out because that's going to be a key when you have an event. One way to do a press release is like a child's birthday party invitation. Who? Bop, bop, bop. What? Bop, bop, bop. When? Day. When? Time. The why. These are the five W's. Who, what, where, when, why. If you send out an announcement that's sort of like in a bullet point outline form, it'll work. Um, it'll work better if you make it a miniature news article. Um, the hope with miniature news articles, and you're looking at one here, the grand hope of something like that is that it might end up word for word in a publication. You don't have to worry about the messing up because I just ran it. Um, it happens. It did not happen this time, but it conveyed the information in a way a news director, producer, editor, reporters, uh, cameramen. I point out cameramen because sometimes the reporters on the weekend when they're on a skeleton crew be nice to the cameramen on TV stations. They have, they have, they, they may dress super casually and maybe salty, but they know what's going on. So I'm going to lead you through the parts of a news release. At the top, you say it's a news release or press release. The convention will be news release because presses don't really exist anymore, but people get it for immediate release. Um, that's a convention. You could put something. If you say you're announcing an event that's going to be three or four months, you don't want people to forget about it. You want to embargo it, E-M-B-A-R-G-O, and say not for release. If if it's, we're talking about June 14th, happy flag day. If you're talking about June 14th, that's going to happen on Labor Day, embargoed for August 15th. Uh, news media, the pros respect an embargo. Can they blow it? Yeah. Should you be ready for it? Oh, yeah. But it's a convention that most people do and, and use generally, and especially for here, because we're announcing something with two weeks notice, a month would be better if you're trying to get attention of the media. But we had very little time, immediate. They can just go for it. For more information, um, we'd, we'd send it to our president. It could have been to, as I'm, since you just met a Mike or me, because we're sort of organizing the event, because Herschel, it will be in Little Rock at an AEA meeting. Um, that weekend. So we're doing it without our fearless leader. And again, this is a good mark of how good we are, how tight our, our board is and working together. The point about the contact person is whoever it is, it could be the organizer, it could be you who wrote the event, your group's leader. If a reporter 
or photographer or anybody with the station or publication calls for more information, you got to call them back now. I mean, within an hour. It may be two o'clock, they're planning on something at six o'clock or five o'clock news. Now is really important. It's going to be someone who's available 24 seven and, uh, you know, will say what needs to be said. If they don't have every last fact, then they say, you know, so-and-so knows more, let, you need their number. But this has to be a, a relatively quick response for almost anything. The Labor Day or, or May Day picnic, you still need someone available to call back immediately. So I'm repeating that because it's important. I have an introductory sentence uh, here. I then have a supporting paragraph that's informally in journalism, we'd call it the nut graph. This has most of the Ws, the who, what, where, when, why. This has most of it. I refer with a link to the resolution because if it's a newspaper and they want more information, they can see the resolution we adopted at that same February meeting. Um, the February meeting, we approved the creation of a resolution and we would support the board of Local 965 and whatever they come up with. So we didn't have to go back to the membership. That's again for speed. We have a we have a resolution full of whereas, 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 and therefore, if they wanted to link to it as a PDF for more information, the event is going to start at St. Martin's Episcopal Center. I have a Google map on the address, just cause the media and public are invited. If it's again my secondary example of a membership picnic. The media and public provided, I would also say, and the event is free. You want to let them know. If there's a donation or a ticket, let them know. Um, so we build up more information about just what's going to happen. This is telling reporters what to expect um, that we plan for. You know, what we haven't planned for, who knows? Um, the next paragraph is background. Um, in case they haven't been reading the announcements which the university administration has begun filtering out, this is our cause. And I've said it in, I don't know, 40 words. You'll see this whole piece is about 140 words or so. I then have a quote, sound bites or sound bites, it's always good. Um, did Herschel literally say this? I, have, I haven't been asked about this. He approved it. I, as the spokesperson, you might do a quote for your chief but they have to approve it. They have to know that it is something they would say, and yes, they repeat it for you. It is what they said. And actually this came from, from something Herschel actually said in an interview. It was very easy to come up with it because all I had to do was transcribe. It shows the impact. It shows how important this is to people. Um, this, I'm just real happy with this press release. We got to include a lot of information about it. Um, Facebook is next. What happened? Um, what happened is we had a nice looking rally. This is actually a grab from a video. The video is 15 seconds long. Um, it doesn't work. Um, it could be available, but you, what you see is what you get. It looks really cool. Uh, we did it. We haven't done anything like this in years and years and years. And I would say something worked. Um, this Universities, several hundred custodians and groundskeepers are not working for a private company. They keep all of their benefits, including steep tuition discounts. If you work for the university in any capacity, 90% off tuition. Um, yes, you go to hr.uark.edu to apply for a job. Um, if you're a family member, including a, a spouse, partner, uh, and so forth, um, you get 50% off tuition. If you want to go to another UA campus, it's 40% tuition discount. This is serious. People stay in sometimes menial jobs uh, for their families or for themselves to better themselves. This is one of the big points. Um, I will note here that you, you, you see the number, you can kind of rough count it. Uh, you can't control what the newspaper and TV do. You just hope for your best shot, they get most of it right. The uh, statewide newspaper counted us as being two dozen people. Um, at the rally that started off, we had 48 um, at any one sitting. If they'd actually counted, it would have been fine. At, when we closed and met outside the chancellor's office in the main administration building, 
We counted 51. We have photos. So, not this photo, but we have other photos, group shot, and we actually counted. The newspaper getting it wrong for whatever reason is fine. They put it in the first paragraph. Overall, the story worked. Uh, was it worth asking for a correction? No. Was it worth embarrassing the reporter on Twitter like I did? Yeah, I guess so. Um, I wanted him to know that we knew. Um, and that was a judgment, and I thought about it for a couple of days. I did not act in haste. Um, I didn't want a correction because it stirs up other, it can make things more complicated, case-by-case -case basis. They got it in. We got two out of three newspapers, um, I'm sorry, two out of three TV stations. One TV station did a nine-minute report before this happened. TV stations work on 30-second or 75-second bits that they had nine minutes just on the custodians. Was it like a full mini 60 minutes kind of report? Um, that's from preparation. It's not that I'm bragging, it's just like, heck, it worked this time. We had one bad error in a newspaper and the rest of it's cool. The statewide newspaper, it didn't publish just here. It went to the Little Rock edition also. We won, we got this. Um, I'm showing you, I'm moving on. We don't know why this worked. I'm going to go back to our rally. Um, in my mind, I think Chancellor Robinson looked at the pros, looked at the cons, saw that this privatizing us to a a, a large uh, British-based corporation, which is what it would do, would cost the university more money than just keeping the employees, keeping their management, doing all of their payroll and paperwork. That was cheaper than outsourcing because those people would want a hefty fee for their trouble. Um, did we help by pointing out that new hires would be cleaning their their kids? You know, this would be parents we're talking to the dorm rooms of their kids, and we don't know who those people are. They're low paid because we're not getting our. We don't have great salaries, but we do have a decent salary. You know, for this level of worker, do we trust them? So I'm hoping he freaked out overall. But I'm still saying a win is a win on this, um, that we would have stirred up more trouble if you went the other way. Oh, yeah. Did we plan what would happen if? We didn't go there because we didn't know the what ifs. We were going to wait for that moment. This is a bare bones website. Websites look awful on PowerPoint slides. It's much prettier in person. Part of what we do on the website is that when we have events with photos, campus-wide picnic, our um, May Day picnic. We had an all afternoon workshop where we combined with the Northwest Arkansas Labor Council and had members of labor unions from across Northwest Arkansas and Arkansas. April came and spoke and Mike gave a version of his speech there today. It all works. It gets the word out. If people Google you or Google us, Local 965, they're going to come up with a website. It's a central repository. It's that hub and spokes. So to recap this, and in some brief, we can't use campus media. It's off limits to us. There's a daily report. I think U UALR has one. Um, school districts often have announcements, general school district of wide events. We're not in a campus organization. Sometimes if we can kind of crouch behind a professor for a sponsored activity, um, the all afternoon workshop, this I mentioned a minute ago, our first and last year got into the campus news service. This year's did not. You got to have a multi password thing. Website is sub, I've talked about. The email list has announcement. The press release, I've gone into detail. Got a contact person, one person, how to reach them in any form. They have to call back in an, within an hour. You know, and if they say, I'm at work, I'll call you back later, it still counts. You know, that's the person you need. Social media, it worked both for internal. We wanted our own members at that crowd. We had a lot of our members, we had a lot of custodians. Many custodians brought their small children. Um, if they could walk, they were there. I think we had one baby in arms there. Um, more power to them. But we wanted everybody, both internally and the world in general. Analog still works. I can't speak for phone banks like Bayard Rustin ran in the next Blitz movie that spends quite a bit of time in that um, boiler room situation. Um, but you can certainly let people know, people on the 
if they're not members and thinking about it, contact them. Um, Herschel, our president, does a lot of that. That's part of how he feels his job as president, say, I'm writing you directly person to person. It works. It, it, it is a carryover. Um, RSVPs. Um, if you do a Facebook event, you'll find out how many people are interested and how many people are going. Um, we've done it. It goes both ways, um, which is that it undershoots or overshoots. Um, I think the one I showed you said 27 people were going. Well, we had 51. Did those people who clicked going by name, were they there? A lot of them weren't. It can undershoot or overshoot. People are really interested in it. Don't show up. Bad day. They forgot there's a ball game on TV. Who knows? And it can go the other direction. You can get 100, 200 there and 20 show up. That's tricky when you're renting a room for an event. It's not a happy situation. We've been there too. Viral on our scale. When you do send a mass email, either you've got a list of 100 uh, or you're using an contact, constant contact or MailChimp situation. This is why I say viral is relative. A good result in email in a mass email is 35 or 40%. Yes, that means 60 or 60% didn't see you because it went to spam or junk, or they saw the heading, saw it was all, it's from the union, or the, your subject line just didn't nail them, and 65% didn't open it. That's why we have all these avenues and why I'm overcomplicating this. Um, that's, the, that's the way it works. For this event, the March and Rally, we got over 50% opens. It's a success. Is it viral? On our scale, that was viral. We got a lot of people to read that mail. A really great subject line, of course, is the key. And they can't be very long because some people's email closes off after four or five words. I'm saying, I want to note here, note here that failures are successes too. We got this one. Um, the very next meeting uh, that we had, uh, we had six people at the next meeting. We thought it'd be a big celebration, speaking of counting and undercounting. Everybody went back to work. It's okay. Uh, we did. We saw that we could do this and we could do it again. I do want to make a note, what I'm calling successors, being a communications person, being a spokesperson for your group, a publicist, comms, you know, as it would be in a British documentary. I do comms, World War II documentary, whatever, is you can burn out. Um, in any case, even if you're really hot on the topic, you want to share the Facebook email and the Facebook password with other people, the Twitter password with other people in case you're sick or on vacation. Um, I have handed out every time we have a new board election, I give them all administrative access to the website. Has anybody ever clicked on it? I don't know, but that way we're ready. It's just really crucial. And that's basically the sum I'm hoping there's questions. I have deliberately not low. 33, of course, that could be everybody doing roll earlier. Um, but I wanted to leave room for a broad discussion. Uh, and I guess we have about 10 minutes left. So broad is relative, but if you're really keen on press release, we can talk about it. Um, I'm going to get out of stop sharing so that I can view to chat. Unless, um, April, you wanted to uh, field the questions for well, me. I two questions <laughs> i haven't seen any questions in the comments yet but um your newsletter um i know that it's a lot of work or is it and um i'd like to encourage other locals that are on right now um if you could give them some sort of um overview quick overview how do you do that so that it's not so much work okay well on the newsletter um, hard. <laughs> oh, it's a tricky question because uh, if you're going to, if you own with 500 people free, emails free, they have a limit, only 100 announcements a month. It, we're not going to do that. It's just very free, but there's templates. You could choose a template. Uh, when I showed you mine, um, article straight down, article straight down. I'm gesturing on, on the video, just the simplest possible. Um, go through with the, if it's constant contact or MailChimp, they have tutorials to show you. I have picked one and I kept it. And I, I save over. I, I do a save as, duplicate whatever you say. 
and change the date. Um, and then I erase, say, the president's message and put in the president's new message. That makes it simple. Uh, based on one of our recent AEA meetings, I think in the fall, I'm not remembering which one. Well, last year, I, I, I won for best newsletter. This year, uh, Little Rock did. I don't know if it's Little Rock District or special. And uh, what was pointed out in the meeting was that the uh, poll articles from the NEA today, and uh, you weren't writing the three on fire at them. But I, that's the last part of every email is that I blurb stories that are of interest, could be of interest to my people. And then I link to the NEA story or when April has one and she's pointing to something that they're doing, I either just quote her, this is going to happen, or I link to something, have a hyperlink to whatever she's referencing. So that way you know statewide. If you have a monthly uh, message from the president, that's very handy. It's hard on the president. Herschel's great. Uh, Herschel's predecessor was great at it. It can be hard for a president month after month to think of something. And so you have to make, either make an allowance for it or write something and be their ghostwriter. So things like that can happen. I always announce the agenda for the coming meeting. I always announce the minutes for the previous, and that way we can vote on them. Does anyone ever read the minutes? I'm not sure. But but it, it makes a nice newsletter. So uh, the president's message may be an announcement or, or two about local stuff. A couple of pictures from past events, like I showed her a picnic and the one I had in the slide. A uh, news from around the state fills it out. It's a it's a it's a Sunday afternoon. You know, there's no yeah. doubt about it. Or you know, Wednesday, Tuesday night or something to do. Um, I make mine the third. I do mine the third weekend of the month because our meeting is the third Thursday. So there's a regularity. And yeah, do you have to remind people who promised you to write something? Yeah, you got to be the edit cranky editor. It, it, do you want to get any more deep in any of that, April? What's that, that again? What's that question? Uh, yeah, I mean, is that enough explaining the newsletter? Yeah, it is. And, you know, I just want to encourage those locals on here that don't have a newsletter that you want to reach out to your members. You want them to feel engaged, and that's one way to do so. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm going to make one other, I, I want to make one other note okay. about it. Um, because it, And it's a, it's nothing that you, you said, but it's a good point to remember, which is privacy and transparency. I'm all about transparency. I'm an old newspaper guy. The more, the better. But members probably don't need their names out there. Uh, we're, we're in a tricky situation statewide, as Mike talked for, you know, in detail about, implying the present is a great situation for us. Um, so in a newsletter, Probably officers are okay with the names being there and board members, and I'd check with them, but I'd respect members' privacy and not name them. It, that's just the thing about newsletters, Facebook, and so forth. Um, if you were to reach around and ask everybody how you feel each time, that might eat too much time. Just assume, err on the side of privacy for individuals. Okay. Hey, I had, a, I had another question, too. But I know Herschel's got a question, too, but... Um... But some people would be uh, really jealous of the fact that you had 14 people at your meeting. How do you get so many people involved? Because you all have a lot of members that actually keep showing up and working. And a lot of our locals don't have but a couple or maybe one that's actually doing stuff. Do you have any hints for locals that are on right now to try to get more folks involved? Um, well, I guess. The easy answer, the hard answer, the true answer is no. <laughs> but that's too quick. That's too shrill. And that's not what we're about. Um, on it is uh, repetition, letting people know that you're there. Letting um, We don't meet formally with an agenda and quorum in the summer. Uh, but we are meeting at the Beer and Wings place every month. We're calling it happy hour. Because it's 530, whether we meet or not. And... Um, it was the president and me last month. Uh, so I get that. What I was basing some of my presumptions on is that I have done a bit about with Springdale and Fayetteville's education associations. They're pretty massive. It's just really cool. But for most of the groups in AEA to be like us, we have 50 members. Uh, we have a total of seven or eight board members. Um, 
we'll have one or two board members come to a meeting, one or two officers. Um, if you have a regular member who comes to two meetings, they're going to be on the board. <laughs> they're obviously showing an interest. Uh, you know, we've got a couple of people here. Uh, actually, one is leaving the university. So when you have one here who's actually gone to two or three meetings, watch them. That's but right. they're going to have their own contacts. It's a network spider web thing out. But sometimes and, people just want to be asked. They don't know how to help, but they want to help. They just need to be asked. Yeah, and, and that's actually that's actually brings up another piece related that may help. Is we only have, like I said, about fifty members. Our mailing list is four hundred and ninety nine. Uh, every place we go, every event we have, we have a clipboard. Uh, we have a QR code that takes people to a contact form, sign up, um, name, email, are you interested in committee work, and so forth, and they're on the list. This letter, and that's part of the reason why I mentioned privacy, it goes to 500 people. Um, and I more or less know, I've, as the comms person, I look at, at everybody on the university's directory and just see where they are. We do encourage people on the mailing list to use their personal email addresses. Um, if you're using your district, your schools, your districts, your university's email, it's open record. Um, and I love FOI, but it could come back and bite you. Um, generally, the higher up our members are, the more they use Gmail. But we go to a lot of events. We have the UARC. If they come to a meeting, we say, please change it. However, for a lot of people, and I imagine it's more true in more rural areas, the work email is the only one they use. Right. And, and I'm not trying to denigrate them. My supervisor for years at the university, she only used her York address and boy, she put personal stuff on there. Not, I mean, not that would bother her. She's still gainfully employed in another department. It's not, it's not like that, but it's just like, I don't know if you want to put that there. Yeah, right. And, Herschel, and, and, got a question? Herschel had a question. I actually don't have a question. What I want to say is how extremely lucky we are to have a communications professional of Ben's caliber uh, as a member of our, oh, quit your humility there, dude. You're, you're awesome. And um, I think the other thing that, that puts this together is Ben, Ben comes at things from that communication perspective, which helps board members, the president, Mike, we were all able to sit and talk about things. And Ben often brings up the key point of why we should or shouldn't do something or um, what we need to add to that. So I I want to I want to thank him because he is just an an invaluable part of the team that is the local nine six five. Yes, he is. He is really wonderful. Oh shucks! Okay. And uh, you all have this. I'm 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 putting a a thing in chat, um, which I meant to mention earlier, but it was not a slide, so I forgot to mention it. I have put the slides. It made them a PDF and I've put them on my personal website. Um, so if you want to see the list, see the slides, that'll help. There's a, there's two other pieces on there, uh, on this page uh, about it. Mike, thank you. Herschel, thank you. Um, what one piece is, is that there are email best practices. I mentioned briefly um, that when you write several people or you use a service, and if you get things from a utility or from the Democratic Party, the bondman says unsubscribe, that's a federal law. Um, that's people are subject to prevent spamming. There's a lot of that's, but it's counts as a best practice. You don't want to force anybody to read anything. They'll get annoyed and it you know, comes back to bite you. But there's a lot of other best practices, how to write a good subject line. I have three references from official places. I mean, Google has one. MailChimp, Constant Contact, have suggestions on how to write a good email that gets past spam filters. Um, the university, those at uark.edu emails, 
uh, we use a Microsoft system. Anything that comes as part of a an email with 10 or more people goes to spam, no matter what. Um, it's why I mention all this multifaceted and people don't open them. There's a lot of other pieces there too. Um, but along with that, I have a way to contact me. We're all colleagues, we're all in the AEA. If you wanna ask me about your group and something you're facing with, write me. Um, and maybe if I'm tied up for time or all 76 of you, right? At once, you know, it may take a while, but you know, I, I'm going to help AEA. That's awesome, Mitch. Hey, I appreciate you. Anybody else have any last minute questions, comments? All right. Well, we're going to have a little bit longer lunch. Um, so make sure that you're back here just a little bit before one because we'd like to start promptly at one. As I mentioned earlier on the agenda, NEA will be coming in at one and they'll be ready to go right away about get out the vote. Um, I wish you all have a really good lunch and we'll see you back here in about 40 minutes.